Welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian filling in for Jim Rogers today. And we start with some sports news. The Wildcats basketball team qualified for the school's first ever boys basketball trip to the regional tournament. With a 56-44 win over Lufkin Tuesday night at Tyler Junior College in a regional quarterfinal game. Things looked bleak at halftime as Lufkin led 18-16 in a defensive-minded first half. I talk with Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta, and I begin by asking him what the difference was for the Wildcats in a 40-point second half. Um, it just comes down to patience. I thought in the first half we were trying to create our own shot opportunities, and um, we were working too hard to score. And um, I, I really let them know at halftime that our offense is designed to create easy scoring opportunities for us, that we don't have to work that hard. Um, and if we would be patient and reverse the basketball a couple of times, um, their defense will break down, and some of those shot opportunities uh, will just come a little easier. And if they do, we'll probably shoot them at a higher percentage. And uh, you know, um, that was kind of the result. And um, they did a real good job of helping inside. So we tried to move uh, Keaston Willis around a little bit to kind of weaken up their um, their help inside. And he got loose on a couple and was able to cash in some threes uh, to really start us going in that second half. And then once that got going, um, we were able to throw it back inside. So um, we really established a good inside-outside uh, presence in the second half. And I, I thought our overall patience um, was a lot better. Yeah, because it looked like their defense was just in pinnacle, and you know, in that uh, first half, for only 16 points. I don't know if we've had a half where we only scored 16. No, and I knew coming into it, they were, if not the best half-court defensive team we've played all year. Hats off to Lufkin, very good, uh, well coached, um, good game plan going in, and um, they're just physical. They're strong athletes, and um, they're not going to give you anything. Uh, and you're going to have to go in and earn everything. But we knew if we kind of move them around a little bit more. Um, it makes defense harder, and um, we were able to do that in the second half. And good rebounding, too, was a big key, and it came through big time last night. Yeah, I think that's, once again, one of our best assets as a team is how, how uh, well we rebound the basketball. And um, Lufkin, uh, when they shoot it, they try to go get it. And uh, they do a really good job of it. But hats off to our guys that really finished in possessions. Um, that was a big key for us. Now, you, you said one of the things they really like to do is drive the basket, and they did not have many opportunities. I think one, maybe two, mm -hmm. and that was about it. And going into it, we knew that was their strength, and uh, we really worked on uh, keeping them out uh, of that area. Um, they, they ran some different entry actions that kind of moved around our defense to try to weaken up driving uh, gaps, but our guys really locked in. and. Um, it really did a good job of executing and what we call helping the helper. Once one person slides over, it's not just one person, but now another guy's taking his guy and then another guy's taking his guy. So um, all five guys were engaged defensively, and that, that makes a big key um, when you're playing a team of that caliber. And we got a lot of blocks, too, when they got in there and tried to put something mm -hmm. up. We did some block after block. It seemed like a lot of blocks. Yeah, we, we have such length, and uh, we have a lot of size, and uh, we made a big emphasis on not fouling but walling up. and. Um, trying to alter some of those shots once they get in there. And um, we did a really good job of that. Uh, hats off to our players. Uh, they just they battled and played hard, and I couldn't be more proud of our group. It's just too bad the Wildcats can't draw any fans. That's the, <laughs> yeah, not that's at all, you know. Tongue in cheek. Yes. No, um, <clears throat> it was. Uh, and I, I, I thanked everybody on all of our social media uh, sites last night, but once again, just. Thank you all for coming out, and uh, you, you guys gave us that boost we really needed, and it's, uh, it's exciting to, to when we go play places because people talk about, you know, how much fan support and community support we have, and, um, you know, it's just a great feeling for our kids. They deserve um, all the support in the world because of how hard they work and how much they invest, and um, I'm just uh, appreciative of uh, um, everyone who does that. Now, Highland Park, they've kind of been hiding in the weeds this mm -hmm. year. We haven't heard a lot from them. I didn't even know that they were all that strong, but obviously a very, very strong team. And sound like one of their football players have had a great game last night coming in there and just all over Dallas Kimball. Yes, they're very good. They're as fundamental as the team's going to be. They shoot the ball as well as any team. Um, don't have a whole lot of size, but they play as hard as nails. I mean, they're going to get after you, and um, they're going to do all the little things right within a game to win that. And uh, we just got to do a really good job of uh, executing our stuff. and. 
Um, I, I like our matchup going into it. Uh, I think we have a size advantage and can play some inside outside basketball, but um, we got to stop them. Uh, they're, they're as good offensively as uh, Midlothian um, type of team. And um, they, they have four to five guys on the floor at all times that can shoot it and space you. So they run a lot of really good actions, they're well coached. Um, so we'll have our hands full, but uh, that's what these next two days are uh, for to prepare. All right. Uh, you've made us do is go back into time. You remember a couple of years ago, I think with 30 wins or might have been 27, everybody was talking, you know, what's the most the Wildcats have ever had? Now, have has a Wildcat team ever been to the regional uh, tournament before? No, la last year was the furthest we've ever been. Okay. Um, so wow. the, the last two years, um, actually two years ago was the furthest we've ever been. Um, we've, they've never made it past the area round. Wow. Um, and then we were able to make it to the regional quarterfinals, and now we're able to make it to the regional uh, semifinals. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to, we're taking a step each year, and I hope we take more than just this one step. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, what this weekend brings, and um, it, it could go anybody's way. Um, uh, two games left uh, to make it uh, to San Antonio, and I think we're as good as anybody, so um, you can answer that. Uh, and uh, a great venue, uh, the Colwell Center. Remember that Garland tournament last year, just a beautiful place. Oh, it is. It's as nice as any, and um, it's as well ran as any tournament. It has a good atmosphere, almost like a mini Astrodome. So they'll prepare whichever team um, is uh, going to get that opportunity to go to San Antonio. So uh, we're just, once again, just grateful to uh, have this opportunity. The good Lord has blessed uh, me, blessed this team, um, and we're just trying to keep moving forward. Gets it over to Wortham, and the ball in the hands of Moore. Moore slashing in. Put it up on Day Day and hit the shot. Good shot there by Jordan Moore. And it is a two point ball game. Shades of Midlothian. This uh, Lufkin team will not go away. 27 25, 318 and counting here in the third quarter. Jeremiah Rowland dribbling outside the arc. Looking inside. Continues to dribble. Bounce to uh, Xavier Court. Down low to Day Day. Tipped away from him and he was knocked to the floor. And he'll pick up a Lufkin foul. They didn't like the call. Something knocked Day Day to the floor. The Wildcats rank number four and 27 and eight for the season. Play Highland Park in a regional semifinal game Friday night at 6 p.m. at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland. Three Wildcats football players who played both offense and defense signed letters of intent for colleges during a signing ceremony Wednesday morning. So I've already told these guys congratulations again, parents. Congratulations to you. I know you've been a part of this process too, and it's been kind of stressful because I've visited with a couple of you. So uh, well, we're glad you're here. We're here right now. So guys, go ahead and sign them up. <laughs> and I had a chance to talk with Austin Dodd and Landry Tyson, who are going to Texas A&M Commerce, and Damian Dugan, who signed with Hardin-Simmons University in Abilene. Uh, give us your parents' names, please. Uh, Landon Dodd and Corey Rowell. All right. Tell us how you got interested in A&M Commerce, how that all came about for you. Well, uh, they invited me and Landry on an official visit, and we went down there and uh, we toured the place, and it was really nice and uh, gave me quite a bit of money and just loved it, so uh -huh. thought it was home. Good match for you? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody else came on strong to you? Was this a tough decision? Or? Uh, Southern Nazarene in Oklahoma came strong, but uh, it wasn't really. It was too far, and I didn't really enjoy it as much. Now you've returned punts, uh, you catch the ball, you play defense on safety. What are uh, A&M Commerce, what are their plans for you? Well, I'm supposed to play slot, but I can play anything, so it's whatever they want to do with me. Uh -huh. You like the slot uh, idea? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, what, what kind of goals do you have for yourself in college? Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, get as big as I can and play as much as I can and just get looked at and see if I can go to the next level. What, we, what are you going to major in? in? Uh, engineering. Engineering? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. well, ultimately, to do what? What would you like to do? Uh, probably like some type of mechanical engineering or civil engineering, oh, just something that? around there, building stuff, you know. Is it exciting going with your teammates? Oh, yeah. It, it's definitely – I don't feel like I'm alone now, so I got somebody I can talk to and stuff. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you carry offense or defense? or? What, uh, what, no, I really don't like? care. It's just, uh, just I, I'll play anywhere. 
oh yeah, I just want to get on the field. Are you pretty excited about going to the college game now? Oh okay. yeah, oh yeah, definitely. What do you think you have to do to get bigger and stronger? For, uh, you know, the they got a lot of good coaches and good programs, so just really do what they say and just probably take a year off just to focus on that, and then once I get that, then I'll be ready to play. Is A&M Commerce a team you followed through their? Through oh yeah, oh yeah, they they win. They're a winning program. They won a national championship in 2017. So, oh yeah. Pretty definitely. excited about staying pretty close yeah, to home. Yes, yes, sir, definitely. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, Landry. Yes, sir. Give us your parents' names, please. Uh, Derek Tyson and Christy Tyson. Okay. And tell us uh, uh, your story, I guess, very similar to Austin's as far as A&M Commerce. Oh, yes, sir. We've just, we've known about them living in Sulphur Springs all this time. So it was, they've known about us, and it was great going on the visit. And, you know, like you said, we had a great time, and we feel like they really want us there. Usually we have to ask uh, how the program is, but we're kind of familiar with it. They've, they've had a lot of success, of course, national championship. Yes, sir. We're, we're pumped to be able to go to a team that knows how to win and already has that culture there, and we just got to learn from those guys. After seeing uh, your abilities as a receiver, we got to find out what a good defensive player you were last year. Uh, are they looking as a receiver for you? Uh, yes, sir. Looking at me as a receiver, but like Austin said, I'll play anywhere they want me to. All right, and just you're blown away with the school and everything. Yes, sir. I, I liked it a lot. I've gone there, visited there a couple of times, and I've had a great time every time. I know you got good grades and you're up there in your class. So what, what plans for college do you have? I want to major in kinesiology and eventually like be able to train young athletes. Oh, kind of another uh, like um, Michael Johnson. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Exactly like that. We think about as far as the college game, you're pretty excited about the, you yes. know, bringing it up a level from high Yes, sir. I'm things. pumped. The uh, intensity's up. Everything's bigger and just more intense. I'm pumped. Hey, how do you like the new coach up there, Coach Baylor? Uh, we got to meet, me and Austin, we got to sit down with him and talk yeah. on our visit. And I like him a lot. He's a real cool dude. Yeah. He said like a really a good program. And of course, he's coached at Rice. It's bigger schools. I'm sure he's got a lot of experience. Yes, sir. Pretty excited with the type of offense they run. We don't know a lot about it yet because because of the new offensive coordinator, but uh, he invited both of us, since we live so close, to come to spring practice a couple times okay. and see what they do. So we're looking forward to that. Right. Pretty excited. Huh? And get to stay close yeah. to home, too? Yes, sir. That's great. Thanks. Very yes, sir. We're proud of you. Thank you. Uh, Damian Dugan here. And, uh, give us uh, your parents' names, please, Damian. Uh, Latanya Evans and Damian Dugan. Okay. Uh, how did um, Harden Simmons come about for you? Well, I actually got an offer from Louisiana College, that's in their conference. Mm -hmm. And one of my good friends from Commerce, he goes to Harden Simmons and he hit me up. He was like, uh, we were there in our conference and we beat him out of town. So he talked to the coaches for me. <laughs> and the coaches just texted me and they told me to come on a visit and they offered me on a visit. Now, you're another versatile guy, play offense, defense. Uh, what are they looking specifically for if they decided? Um, DB and return specialists. Oh, okay. You like that? Yes, sir. And uh, how, how it is? How is it to uh, play that uh, uh, defensive back position? Uh, you know, you're kind of on the island there. And it, well, it takes a certain personality, doesn't it? Oh yeah, you gotta be smart. Obviously, I'm not the tallest dude, so I gotta be fast, physical, and you know, DB is like one of those spots where if you do one thing wrong, everybody's gonna see it because you're out alone by yourself. So you gotta do do what you gotta do. Uh, I know Harden Simmons, they seem like they've always been kind of a step away, but they've had some good success, haven't they, out there? Yeah, they lost maybe, I think they lost three games in three years. Lose to the same team, Mary Harden and Baylor. And they won a national championship last year, so, yeah. And uh, you impressed with the staff? And yeah, I like the coaches and I like the school, like uh, academic or well, It's far away, but yeah, I like it. Okay, very good. Uh, what, what are you going to major in? Kinesiology. Okay, all right. What do you want to do with that? Like after I get my degree, I want to maybe become like a graduate assistant, be like a coach, or maybe a personal trainer, something like that. Oh, great. Good deal. Pretty excited about going to the college game and the, the speed of it and all that. Yeah, it's gonna be way different high school. So, yeah. how do you feel like you, your skills fit in? Feel like you'll you'll adapt pretty. Quickly? I mean, yeah, but I got I obviously gotta get I gotta get bigger, faster. Yeah. Like match up with college players, so. But you, but you met with the coaching staff and you, you like them. Mm -hmm. like yeah. yeah, I like, like the program. What kind of defense are you going to get? Are they going to – is it like um, a cone or man-to-man? -man everything. Gonna, everything. Oh, they're going to do everything. Yeah. College is up to step up, isn't it? Yeah, and we – I think we got the best defense in our conference, so. That's great. That's great. Thank you. you Good luck, man. Thank yeah. you. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I heard that. I heard that. I heard that.
Charlene Garrison Freeman, who is director of Northeast Texas Children's Museum, brought some exciting news about the museum's move to a new location in Commerce. And I'm so glad to be here today to tell you about some things that are going on. Uh, the Children's Museum has been in existence now for 17 years. We have about 30,000 visitors a year. But our problem moving forward was we did not have a home. We were leasing our building. Uh, the university has some other plans for our spot. And so we have been in a quandary for about two years of what to do, where to go, uh, could we make it happen. So we are very excited to announce that the Children's Museum has purchased a building, 26,000 square feet on seven acres, and it is actually two and a half miles closer to Sulphur Springs. Really? So you have now a home. Yes. You have your building. We, we have a future, and, and even though we have been successful, we did not know where that future was going to take us. Well, go back and tell me about something that you mentioned as we were just chatting. It is a miracle already because it wasn't supposed to be. Yes. When I first came as the director of the Children's Museum, someone told me that the museum was a miracle. And the more I have been there, I've been there now for 10 years, the more I have seen that miracle come into I've seen the miracle. So there is no reason to have a children's museum in Commerce, Texas. We are not in a large metropolitan area. We don't have a big donor. But it is the support of the families in Northeast Texas that have made a children's museum possible. And so our thanks and gratitude for any of you listening who have made the children's museum a part of your family's life. The Children's Museum is currently located across from the university. Yes, our building, we have leased our building uh, for 12 years from the university. Okay, okay. And so you needed a, a new place, and so one has come available, and I know you're thrilled to death. It's not ready for you to move into yet. And we are not closed. We've already had phone calls from people saying, uh, are you closed? No, we're not closed. I hope we will be moving in the fall. Okay. And I know that quite a few are on our email list, follow us on Facebook. So we will keep you posted in every way we can. But we are still open. We are getting ready for spring break and other events that are coming up. Because you have lots of kids in classrooms that come to the Children's Museum. We try to get children in the in the museum either with families or school groups or whatever other way someone might want to come every day we want to be busy and so currently we have a fifth grade science program we call it weird science mm -hmm. and tomorrow is our last day for that program okay. but that program started in january uh, and will end tomorrow and then that moves us right into our field trip season so we will be busy with field trips beginning in March, April, and May. So schools call and book field trip dates. Yes, they do. And then summer, summer seasons. Summer we have different theme weeks. Uh, we have different uh, farmers that we bring in. It will be a variety of activities, but we post all this on our web page. And in fact, anyone planning to come to the museum, if you want to know if a school group is there, if you want to bring your child, check our web page and see what our schedule is. And that website is? www.netxcm.com. N-E-T-X-C-M. Northeast Texas Children's Museum. Dot com. Okay. Well, that's easy enough, and it's easy enough to find now. If you did not know that we have something such as a children's museum, well, we do, and it's not far away. It's in Commerce, Texas, and will remain in the Commerce, Texas area, even in the new location. So why would a parent or a, a grandparent or a, anyone want to take their children to? What, what would they see there? We have over, about, I counted recently, 45 different play areas. Wow. It is hands-on, creative, imaginative play. So I know that children get to use their imagination in ways that are not provided 
in a lot of places now. I know recently I walked by the airplane and one young man about three years old had filled the airplane with all the groceries from the grocery store. <laughs> and I said, you really need to take the groceries back to the grocery store so other children can play with them. And he looked at me very seriously and said, but I'm going on a long trip. Oh. So, of course, he needed all those groceries. <laughs> so, uh, the creativity the children come up with amazes me every day. There are, and are open areas for just... Can un, un, let's say unstructured play. Yes, is right? it is definitely unstructured. What else can you tell us about the Children's Museum? Well, the Children's Museum was what has been chosen the best creative children's experience in Texas. Wow. And that was by bestof.com a few years ago. And that our area that we are now attracting visitors from uh, goes all the way from Dallas to Mount Pleasant and from Denison to Dangerfield. Wow. But school groups and visitors uh, are coming from throughout the area. You are actually covering a large area of yes. visitors coming to the Children's Museum. Yeah. Is How much does it cost to go through there? Well, if a child is not two yet, it's free. It's $6 for children, $5 for adults. And we have family memberships. We have family plus memberships, grandparent memberships. But it is our goal to keep our admission cost and our other cost to what people in this area can pay. We don't charge the prices that Dallas would charge. I would say, yeah. $6 for children, two and up, and $5 for parents mm -hmm. or those that accompany them. Mm -hmm. And what is the oldest age of kids that like to come there? Well, probably second or third grade. Now, when you say like to come, if they have older brothers and sisters, they have a great time. But our clothes for the dress-up area don't always fit larger children. Uh, our train does not accommodate their long legs as they grow. Mm -hmm. So basically third grade and under. Okay. Sounds like an extremely exciting place. Um, a grandparent or family membership would allow you to come. Uh, it's been, for a year. It's wow. many times okay. that you want to come. If you have rotating grandchildren that come to your house from time to time from different places. Sounds like the grandparent membership might be perfect. Yes, yes. So we've had some exciting events this spring. We had our daddy-daughter dance, and our theme this year was the Unicorn Ball. <laughs> and that really seemed to be a very popular theme. Uh, we had over 500 people in attendance that night. Wow. So that has been exciting. Uh, and now we're looking forward to spring break. We will have dinosaur days. We have a robotic day uh, that will be done by a college student. So, again, parents can check the web pages to see what is going on each day. And then we also have some fundraisers coming up for our, that will help us move our exhibits to the new building. So, if anyone ever thought about supporting us financially, this is the time we would like for them to do it. They can support us through our events. We have a Frida Mays Bridge Day, okay. and that's not a huge fundraiser, but it does raise some money, and it is for la ladies or gentlemen who like to play cards, okay. like to play bridge. Okay, and that's going to be and April? April 8th, okay. a Monday. And then we also have what has been our largest fundraiser of the year, which is our silent auction. And that is going to be Monday, April the 29th. And that will be at the Sam Rayburn Center on the college camp on Texas A&M Commerce's campus. Okay. And so it will be all day. It, no, it will be at, from six to nine, six to eight thirty. Not sure about those times, so okay. check us. An evening event. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. But all, those will be coming up, and uh, basically we are looking for our money. We want to take our exhibits and reinvent them in our new home. And we are looking at some professional people who do this okay. to help us. And we need the financial help of people in the area to make all this possible. Okay. We need another miracle. Okay. <laughs> well, you have something that 
is unlike anything else this giant lung exhibit that is a teaching tool yes we wanted to have something that we could take to other schools not just have everyone come to us and so with the help of Hunt Regional Health Care we purchased a mega lung it is the only one like it in the state it is 8 feet tall and 13 feet wide and children can actually walk in and we do a lesson inside the lung and currently we are taking that to schools and we do a lesson with we do that with fourth grade but we also have gone to health fairs um, and can it can be taken to other events as well what does it teach the children? It teaches them the importance of maintaining a healthy li lifestyle and keeping a healthy lung. The lung shows all the diseases that a lung has. It shows lung cancer, uh, shows pneumonia, COPD, bronchitis, asthma. And so children can see how these l diseases affect their breathing. Well... It is something that really, uh, whenever it's visual, it really helps children learn. And well, us too. And, and it's so big. Uh, yes, the parents seem to enjoy it, and adults, and we've taken it to events just for adults. But walking through the lung and seeing all the intricacies of what makes us breathe is something that is impressive. You also mentioned... Um, 45 different play areas in your museum. Mm -hmm. That is just astounding. It is. It is. It's miraculous. <laughs> Another miracle. <laughs> and you have preschool programs? Uh, yes, we have three educational programs. We mentioned the science program for fifth grade. We have the dino math program for third grade. Next year, it's going to be more of a STEM program. Okay. And then we have a, a preschool program called Healthy Kids from A to Z. Each of these programs has a sponsor, and but we do we are very much about education. In fact, when the schools come on field trips, we do what we call a show. Uh, you might call it a lesson, but as a, a class comes in, we might do a bubble show, a magnet show, a wind show, and then the st the class gets a certain section of the children's museum to play in. So education is important to us, along with creative play. In order to keep everything that you've already acquired going and add new things to the Children's Museum as you make your move to the new location on Highway 11, then... Two and a half miles closer to Suffer Springs. And that's very important. <laughs> then um, sponsors and donators, donors are always, always needed and appreciated. How could someone just mail you a check? Yes, they can. Our mailing ad address is Post Office Box 994 Commerce, Texas okay. 75429. Okay. But we will be doing things like purchasing a brick uh, that will be there at the museum. And we are just finalizing purchasing the building, but we certainly will provide opportunities for people to donate at any level they would choose to do. You know, you don't think that 25 or $35 makes a difference, but it does. It does. Okay, well, we want to follow your progress through through the uh, rest of the months until fall. We, hopefully you make your move. You'll know more about that within the next few weeks, exactly more dates. Uh, yes, uh, yes. So, you. But just remember, we are still open. We haven't closed our doors, and we are very excited about what the future is for the Children's okay. Museum. The Wildcats soccer team strengthened their hold on the district's fourth playoff spot with an impressive 3 to nothing win over Royce City at Gerald Prim Stadium Tuesday night, the Wildcats and Bulldogs came into the contest tied for the final playoff spot. The Wildcats end the first half of district play with a 2-3 and three record. They are 7-8-2 and two for the season. In the game, the Wildcats broke a 0-0 tie with an unassisted goal from Jose Salazar. Andrew Escobar made it 2 to nothing for the Wildcats with a goal after an assist from uh, Kevin Yanez. Enrique Ariano got the third Wildcats goal assisted by Isaac Gutierrez. The Wildcats begin the second half of district play at Greenville next Tuesday. Greenville defeated the Wildcats at Prim Stadium 5-1 back on February 12th. 
The Lady Cats soccer team took on the district's top team and came out on the short end of a 6 to nothing score at Roy City Tuesday night. The game marked the end of the first half of district play. The Lady Cats have lost four of their five district contests, but they did score a 2-1 to one win over Texas High by penalty kicks last Friday. The Lady Cats are currently in fifth place. The Lady Cats begin the second half of district play at home against Greenville next Tuesday night. And back on February 12th, the Lady Cats lost to the Lady Lions 3 to nothing at Greenville. After several successful years at Crosby, former Wildcats offensive coordinator Jeff Reardon has been hired as the head football coach at Tyler Chapel Hill. Coach Reardon spent seven years in Crosby, and he is the winningest coach in Crosby history. Coach Reardon was on uh, Coach Greg Owen's staff as offensive coordinator for six years, including 2008 when the Wildcats won the state championship. And finally, the Saltillo Lions basketball team lost a heartbreaker on Tuesday night. Slidell topped the Lions 44-42 in a regional quarterfinal game. Slidell built up an 11-point lead after three quarters. The Lions' fourth-quarter rally came up just two points short. Ben Moore led the Lions with 18 points. Eddie Olejo had nine points. Matthew Gurley scored eight points. Chris Bokorst had five points. Levi Hoover had two points. And the Lions end the season with a 26-9 and record. I'm Don Julian filling in for Jim Rogers today on uh, Channel 18 TV News. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everyone.